Welcome to my bathroom, mother suckers. Hey, I am Eloho, and today we're going to be reviewing Young, Famous, and African. So this is a new series on Netflix. Crazy shout out to Netflix, though. This was the show I didn't know I needed. I didn't know the world needed Young, Famous, and African, but we did. And, I'm, and thank you. I actually created a travel journal and I have a journal journal section in the back. So if you see me looking in my book, I'm looking and reading notes because I had to take a lot of notes um, <laughs> because it was just coming at me fast. Pause. It was coming at me fast. So I know y'all not going to leave us with season one, right? We got to come back with season two, three, four, five. And we got to come back with the american edition i'm putting that out there now you feel me it's africans in america um and we young famous and and african too so let's get that pop <laughs> i just gotta put myself in something like i just want to be in it spoiler alert let me let y'all know now i'm reviewing the entire season i don't have time to go back episode by episode brick by brick I'm building the whole house right here, right now. So if you have not watched it, this is your green light. Go watch it. You can watch it. Honestly, I watched the whole series in two days. I watched the whole thing in two days. I believe there's only like six or seven episodes, six, seven or eight episodes. And I just, I just breathed through. I downloaded the app on my phone because when I, <laughs> when I was in transition, I wanted to watch Young, Famous, and African. Shout out to the cast, shout out to Netflix, shout out to the production, shout out to the music, shout out to the stylist, the wardrobe, and we're just gonna discuss, you know, some of the important topics and events that I feel like we should address. Now, I also wanna start by saying that I appreciate the fact that they showed a side of Africa that we don't always get to see in the media. We see the hungry children, right? We see the flies on the faces. We see, you know, people living on the streets. And that is, that is a reality for some people. And, you know, those people definitely deserve help, resources, refuge, right? But unfortunately, the government doesn't always aid those people. So, you know, they really just are on front street when people document Africa, the continent. But it is really important that we show all aspects of the continent. Like, it's not fair. Like, that's like somebody only taking pictures of you and posting it on a gram when, you know, you just woke up or your hair's not done or you had a really bad day or, you know what I'm saying, you're not feeling your best you're not doing your best you had a really low point in your life and that's the only time somebody posts your picture on the gram it's just like but I have good days like I have great days I have wonderful days I have I'm a good person I have days where my hair is done where my nails is done you know where I'm clean where I got money in my bank account so it's just like you know it's just like for other Africans it's like okay can y'all show us in a good light because we have our ups, we have our downs, just like every other continent. They didn't just go, they, see the thing is, they didn't just go, okay, we gonna, we showed y'all the bad, now we gonna show y'all the good. They went from bad to elite. <laughs> they went from bad to billionaire, like, but that's how extreme the economy is. You can have someone who's literally has not eaten, their children have not eaten for days, and then you have someone who's a billionaire. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's unfair. It is very unfair. That needs to change. But that is the reality of the continent. So it's just, like I said, it's only right to show the full scope so people who are not there can get an understanding, you know what I'm saying, of what is actually going on and not just one perspective. This video is sponsored by Body Butter, created by myself and partnered with Nutty Cosmetics. Now you guys already know that I do not play when it comes to my skin and my skin care. Whether I'm on vacation or at home, I'm always treating my skin to the best natural essential oils and butters. And that's why I created this butter specifically for my subscribers this butter is 100 organic vegan and cruelty free and has a special mix of natural essential oils that i found to just just give some good aromatherapy as well as leave your skin feeling smooth with a bunch of vitamins my body butter can be used for adults children men women and everyone in between i like to store the butters either in my skincare refrigerator or leave it out if i want more of an oily texture Mmm, I can just smell the lemongrass and lavender right through the screen. I just love this butter 
and I can't go a day without it. Beautiful, soft, smooth skin is waiting for you at thenuttycosmetics.com. Just type in Eloho in the search bar and you're on your way to more beautiful skin. Love you. The show takes place in South Africa. South Africa is a beautiful country and Joburg is a beautiful city. It's given Dubai. <laughs> Y'all know I love Dubai. But I was like, South Africa is definitely... Ooh, let me, let me text my man. I was like, babe... We should have went to South Africa for my birthday, but we're gonna go to South Africa this year. Well, they coming through with the fashion, the cause. Everybody in this circle is wealthy, is prestige, you know, is affiliated with other wealthy, famous, prestigious people. Now, let me tell you something. <laughs> Can't nobody throw shit like Africans. I'm telling you right now, <laughs> the Africans on Twitter were like, oh, you know, where's the famous people at? You know, and remember, even Africans have to remember that these are different countries on a continent. So someone who's super famous in Nigeria might not be super famous in South Africa or Uganda. You know what I'm trying to say? Not every celebrity or famous person penetrates through all 54 countries. You will have some people that have, you go to their gram, you know, they have millions of followers. They travel, they perform, they live luxurious lives, but you never heard of them. That's the thing. So the shade is the shade. The shade is a bit much. <laughs> I, let me go get my motherfucking Versace glasses because it's too much. Right. So the women on the show we have Nadia, Connie, Kaylee, Annie, and Zari. I like the fact that we also get to see the different cultures and the different like every woman kind of represents their country. Africa's not a monolith. Like not. We, we we blanket Africa, you know, Africans in Africa, we blanket it so much, but I like the fact that we have different countries representing here and we get to see different things. Like what Annie and Swanky, like you're gonna see the fashions because Nigerians are known for just like out dressing everybody in the room. It is what it is. Like, <laughs> that looks the facts of the tea. What you mean? Like the East Africans came through with their fashions too. Don't get me wrong, they look beautiful on Arabian nights, but I feel like they're a little bit more, um, you know, their their kind of stamp is just being just being more. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. But Zari, let's just say Zari represents like the East African woman and is very just confident and subdued and like I don't have to do a lot, but I'm still that bitch. Like you know that. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm subtle and I'm. I'm poised and I'm calm and I'm confident and I'm friendly and I'm pretty. You know what I'm saying? Like she represents the East African girl. Far as the women, I would say my most favorite character. Hmm. <laughs> this is hard. My most favorite character has to be definitely Swanky. Swanky is definitely my favorite character. I feel like every good woman deserves a friend like Swanky. And I really think that's why him and Annie are like this. The way that he shows up for his friend, it's beautiful to me. He cares deeply about his friend. He understands his friend. And when his friend is feeling down and vulnerable and, and you know, like unappreciated, he goes above and beyond to show appreciation for his friend. Like when he said, you know, Annie had a really rough night, um, you know, I just wanted to uplift her spirit. So I booked a helicopter ride for us to fly to dinner and go to dinner and talk. You know, I feel like Swanky was the only person who was genuinely happy for Annie, genuinely concerned about Annie, always going to bat for Annie. If Annie had an issue with somebody, Swanky was there to go and address that situation. Like, hey, what's going on? You know, because he knows that his friend is a good person and he's just riding for his friend. I fucking love that. Like, I was like, yes, Swanky. So Swanky is automatically my favorite character on the show because of the way he shows up for his friend and just how he carries himself. Like, he's always the late one because he's the most fashionable. So he's fashionably late, you know? And I, uh, Africans just tend to be late in general. Uh, I don't understand. But, so yeah, so he's my favorite. My least favorite... My least favorite on the show. Y'all know I don't have a least favorite. 
as you continue to watch each and every episode, you understand the characters more. You understand their background, what they went through in relationships, what they went through with family or growing up or, you know what I'm saying, what makes them who they are and how they move, how they move or just like what position they play in each other's lives. It just, it, it all just it all makes sense in the end. Nadia, I did not think Nadia was gonna be my favorite when I first started watching it, but towards the end, I was like, I actually like you, Nadia. Like, I like when she said, I'm quick to slap a bitch. I said, exactly, like, you get it. So I like Nadia. Two Face, oh my God, I'm sorry. Two Face, I know he's the legend on the show. My mom knows Two Face. Like I told my mom, I was like, "Oh, I'm watching this show, Young Famous in Africa," and I went to her house and we was watching it. She was like, Two Face." I was like, "Mom, you know Two Face?" She's like, "Yeah, he's a big legend." I'm like, "Oh, okay," but uh, Two Face, I wasn't. I'm. I'm never going to. I'm never going to. My vibe is never going to click with 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 someone who's a habitual cheater and abuser, or, or I, I just can't. This is why I don't like the likes of Future and men like that. Like I, I naturally, as a woman, as a nurturer, as as someone who's honest in a relationship, like I can never fuck with people who are not. When Annie started to open up about her relationship with Two Face and said that you know my first child was his fifth child, but we were together, it was an alarm that went off that literally never stopped ringing. And no matter how happy I tried to be for Annie and you know her vow renewal and all of the romantic things that Two Face did for her, it was like that ring was still ringing in my mind. Like this man had five kids on you. Like, were they trip? Like, were they? If he did, that is something that completely broke Annie to her core. Annie was broken to her core behind loving this man so much and having him continuously hurt her. Like, any human being would be hurt behind that. And the fact that she stayed and, 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 you know, like stayed and had children for him after that and took his children as her own. I was like, yeah, that is, that's sad. And, you know, sometimes that's even expected. Like she is the, tr the typical African woman, like Connie said. She's a typical African woman. Stay by your man. You know what I'm saying? Keep your family together. You know, sometimes you got to bite the bullet because these men, they cannot control. But why? Why was I taught as a young African girl that I need to control myself and respect myself and, and honor marriage? And honestly, they were taught that. I have cousins. I have male cousins. The, the boys are taught honor marriage don't have sex before marriage obviously we know most people are not but honor marriage honor your religion you know honor the culture they are taught to honor the culture but they don't do it like <laughs> they don't do it and it's seen as okay they're more likely to not honor the culture but you as a woman you need to still follow this line follow your man you know appreciate him you know support him more it's scary to me that that I don't see a lot of accountability for African men to hold their families together. Diamond said, Diamond said he doesn't know how many children. Today's have. video is sponsored by Jada's Luxury Beauty Supply Store, a black owned luxury beauty supply store in Elmont, New York. The Curling Custard is back and restocked. If you don't know what it is, where have you been? The Curling Custard works especially on type 4 hair for women who want to define their curls. It's basically like a gel. You part your hair, you comb your hair, you apply the custard and watch your coils define. The custard is produced all the way in the motherland, honey, in Ghana. Okay, so shout out to Ghana for this custard and they are back in stock. So make sure you check out jadasluxurybeautysupply.com or take a stop at the shop. Now, Miss Jada has been busy, honey, okay? She also launched a Chebe hair growth oil. That's right, a hair growth oil. If you're experiencing alopecia, hair breakage, dryness, hair damage, try this Chebe hair growth oil. If you're in the area, stop by and let her know that Eloho sent you. If not, go ahead and check out the website, jadasluxurybeautysupply.com. You know, we always need something from the beauty supply store, whether it be a comb, a bonnet, braiding hair, beads, 
grease, whatever it is, shop black owned. And he's not the only one. Like we really gotta, listen, it's, 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 if we talk about it, we talk about it, you feel me? He's not the only one. Nadia also spoke about not having her father in her life and not knowing her father. So sometimes, you know, we kind of push like that broken family narrative on black Americans, but there's a lot of broken families in different countries on the continent as well. There's a lot of fathers who don't know all of their children. There's a lot of fathers who spread their seed and, 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 and go and you never see them again. Or it's a lot of fathers that have kids, raise them up a little bit and disappear. It's like, it happens. You know, it was another emotional scene for me when Zari was talking to Diamond and it was his Arabian night party and it was a party to celebrate some of his success. But I appreciate and I'm proud of the fact that she brought up what he put her through like no holding back this is what you did she said you gave me away like i was everything for you sidebar i looked up zari's age and it says that zari is 41 girl you look the fuck good Zari also told Diamond, this was episode two, Zari also told Diamond, she said, even the times that I knew you messed up, I would just zip my lips for the sake of peace, for us to be happy. I let it go, I let it slide, I moved on, I kept going, I said, keep your family. And this is what a lot of women go through on the continent because it's almost seemed as like a shame it's like a shame when you get a divorce it's a shame when you leave your man it's a shame it's like no keep it together keep the family it's for the sake of the children you have to be you have to ignore it you have to go on he's a man he's gonna do this but be a good woman be a good woman be a good woman it's like hey i've been a good woman like i've been a good woman i'm always gonna be a good woman but a good woman deserves a good man and if I'm being good to you, you should in turn be good to me. Because the same way you could go out there and cheat, I could go out there and cheat, honey. Okay? And we all know women cheat better than men. So you really need to be, you really need to humble yourself. <laughs> you really need to humble yourself out there. <laughs> Each cast member had an event. You know, um, Diamond threw the Arabian Nights party. Connie threw the ball. Um, Andele had that all white event where he invited his two baby mamas. Guys, we have DJ Naked, we have Diamond, we have Andele, we have Swanky, and we have Two Face. So we get into this bro talk scene. I'm kind of going all over the place, but these are just points that stood out for me. Now we have this bro talk scene, and Diamond is toxic, DJ Naked is toxic. They're all toxic, actually. But I appreciate the fact that Andele checked them, and he was like. Because Diamond was talking about how basically like he was cheating and he got blamed for cheating. And Andele was like, so who else is supposed to be blamed for you to, for your cheating? You are to blame for your cheating. Why did you cheat? He said, when I cheated, I was to blame for my own cheating. You are to blame for your own cheating. You cannot blame the woman for you cheating because that was your decision. DJ Naked is so toxic. He says something along the lines of, oh, the only issue, you know, the only issue is that he got caught. We find out that Diamond has children, possibly has children that he does not know. So he says that a woman approached his mother, which this is really usually how it goes in the towns, in the villages. <laughs> That's how we go. You know, the woman will approach your mother and tell your mother, hey, I have a baby by your son. I've seen it happen. <laughs> I've heard stories. Um, you know, the woman will approach the mom and say, I have a baby by your son. He's not taking care of his child. You know, he's not there for us. We don't, we're not being taken care of. You know what I'm trying to say? And that ignites the bomb because the mom is going to run and beat her son because it's like, you brought shame to this family. You had children outside of your marriage or outside of your relationship or just children in general that we don't know about. And, you know, because this is, this is our family. Like we, if these are children in our family, then they are our blood. Then we need to take care of them. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's a big shame when you have children that you're not taking care of, especially on the mom, because everything falls on the women. Oh, you didn't raise your son right, right? That's kind of where that comes from. But so... The mom then tells him, he puts pieces together. Yes, we did have unprotected sex, sex, you know. But the gag is, the woman has a husband. 
I'm like, is this real? <laughs> is this real? The woman has a husband and she and the husband thinks that the baby is his. Hey, God forbid. Drama. DJ Naked then says the only problem is that he got caught. And I feel like DJ Naked's girlfriend, Kaylee, when I first saw Kaylee, I didn't think I was going to like Kaylee as much as I did. I might be going to lie. I saw Kaylee and I said, all right, they got to have a colonizer on the show because it's South Africa. So, you know, you got to throw the colonizers in. But I fuck with Kaylee. I was like, I like that she's honest. She's honest about her relationship with her man and the issues that they're experiencing. She speaks up for herself in the relationship. I appreciate the fact that they were both open to couples therapy and I really enjoyed that therapy session. It was really a first time for me seeing an African man in therapy. Like they think they always right. They think they, they think they know everything and they always right. So to see an African man actually sit with a therapist and, and, and tell him, you know, tell the therapist his business and have the therapist give him advice. I was like, hey, times have really changed, but for the better. So they go to their therapy, they're having their issues in the relationship. Kaylee feels like he's not romantic. He's not sexually attracted to her anymore. You know, he's very boring. He's not as loving as he was when they first got together. And DJ Naked feels like, listen, you're always at my house, bro. But I felt some type of way about that because I'm like, well, if she's always there, like you've allowed her to be there. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, this is your spot. You've allowed her to be there. You could have said like, no, not today, babe. I'm hanging out with my son today. Not today. You know, I'm working today. Not today. Like, let's hang out tomorrow. Like, you welcomed her there. You probably gave her a key. Like, she's not just walking into your apartment. You're allowing her there. But anyway, he feels like she's always there. He doesn't get any time or space for himself. And that if they spent less time together, he would miss her more. <laughs> Mm. And she's like, I'm like, is she a Pisces? Because she was like, if you love someone, of course, you always with the person. You spend all your time with the person. Like, yeah, like, what are you talking about? I didn't like the fact that later on in the season, he ghosted her and just went, I think she said nine days without talking. Like, that was like, you go nine days without talking to me. We're not together. Like, you're, you might just be dead. Like, that's why you didn't hit me up. That's why you're not returning my calls. Like, wow, you really, you're not here anymore. You're in another realm. Like, what? nine days and you didn't call me let's just jump into annie and zari's beef now i i like zari i love the fact that she's so confident she's so pretty she's sweet you know she apologizes when she does something wrong zari lost me and some of the commentary lost me on this but zari lost me when she pulled annie's husband to the side and said, oh, you know that day when you asked to speak to Zari, the boss lady, you know, it has been such a big deal since then. You know, she's very insecure. She probably thinks that we bang. I was like, Zari, no. Like, Zari, are you drunk? I know they do a lot of drinking and eating on this show, but are you drunk? Why are you over there with her husband telling her husband this? I'm just, it's, oh, my nerves is getting bad. What you doing? See, because I don't like, I don't, hmm, women act very funny when men get into the picture. Believe it or not, women act very, ooh, them claws get the coin and it's like, but why? Why? But she calls Annie over and Annie comes over and she's like, yeah, you know, I know you are probably thinking me and your husband banged. Annie was like, no, I didn't think that. And she's like, girl, stop. Like, girl, like, like, you know, like you lying. Like, you know, you've been very insecure about, you know, him asking to speak to me on the phone. And she's like, no, I wasn't. He asked to speak to everyone. But I was just wondering, how did you guys know each other? I asked you and I asked him, how did you guys know each other? But it's like for Zari, I think for Zari, especially because she said in the beginning that, you know, she kind of just keeps her mouth closed and she keeps her lips sealed. When something doesn't look right, hmm, she doesn't speak on it for the sake of peace. So she's expecting Annie to do the same thing. She thinks that if you're a woman who's secure in her relationship, you don't need to ask questions because, hmm, for what? Like, it doesn't even matter. You're not a big deal. I don't need to ask no questions. For the sake of peace in my family, I'm keeping my lips shut. Um, that's nice for you. 
But no, I'm gonna ask every single question I have. Like, inquiring minds wanna know how y'all know each other. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? You don't have to say it in an aggressive tone or aggressive manner. But yes, if my husband says, oh, that's such and such, yeah, what's up, such and such, I'm like, oh, how y'all know each other? Like, just out of curiosity, like, how did y'all meet? Like, I wanna know everything about my man. <laughs> If I love my man, I would know everything about my man. I want to know who he know, what's his favorite color, what's his favorite food, who he been with, who he not been with. But, but to Zari, she sees that as an insecurity. Honestly, I really saw that as normal. Like, how do you know each other? That's pretty normal to me. Maybe y'all grew up together. Maybe y'all worked on a project together. Maybe y'all did have some type of relationship, which I also need to know about. You know what I'm trying to say? So I think that's a valid question. Why y'all think insecure? Y'all got you just got a different view of what insecure is. But let me say this. Even if it was stemmed from insecurity, so are you the insecurity police? Do you need to beat and, and arrest every woman who's insecure? Like, so what if she was insecure? That's her husband. And she asked a question and she needs to get an answer. Okay? And and my issue, which I'm glad I was so like I this moment really made me love Connie more. When Connie sat down with Zari to explain the situation, Connie kind of like opened her eyes a little bit and said, Well, you gotta think about it. Like when you sat down, when you pulled him to the side, you said the wrong thing. You should have pulled him to the side and been like, Okay, so you know, I know you guys are married and you guys are, you know, newly, newly engaged again. Or you're going to be renewing your vows. You know, are you serious this time? Like, is this someone that you can see yourself being 1000% devoted and faithful to? You know what I'm saying? Why not? Like, instead of coming at her for being insecure, come at him for making her insecure. Come at him for cheating and having babies and lying and deceiving and all the other things we don't even know about. Like, why are you attacking her when she's just, she's just the fruit from the tree? Like, those seeds were planted. You know what I'm trying to say? Those seeds of insecurity were planted. So it's like, oh, you're an insecure woman? Let me make you more insecure. Let me go and tell, let me go and sit with your husband privately on the side. And not only sit with him on the side, because y'all could have been talking about anything. Y'all are talking about me. Not only are y'all talking about me, y'all talking about my vulnerability. And he even said, Two-Face said, oh, you want to fuck with her head. That's what he said. And I appreciate him for acknowledging, like, you just want to fuck with my wife's head. You want to fuck with her head. Like, that's, that's devious. Let me tell you this too. Africans are slower to fight. They, the shade, they will give you the shade. They will give you the tongue. They will destroy you with the tongue. When, they, when the Bible said the tongue is sharper than a two-edged sword, that tongue is sharper than a three-edged sword. They will kill you with the tongue, but they a little slow to fight. Just my personal opinion. They're not like they it, it, it take they they argue for 20, 30 minutes before somebody gets slapped. <laughs> before somebody get, you know, do 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 do. They're they're slower to be violent in that way. Because a lot of situations in this in this movie, what about in this series? A lot of situations wouldn't have end well on my block, okay? Wouldn't have end well on my block in New York. It was not going down like that. You put my man to the side, then you call me over, call me insecure. I'm slapping the fuck out of you. But we're on a continent, okay? You know, so these women, they're, you know, they're not really raised to, they're not really taught to like fight, you know, defend yourself physically, you know, you defend yourself with your words, you know, or your money or your status. Like, that's how you defend yourself. Like, well, I'm a billionaire. You heard what she said? She said, well, I'm a billionaire. Like, why would I need your man? I don't want your man. He's not my type. I'm beautiful. I'm a billionaire. You know what I'm trying to say? I, I get what I want. I do what I want. I'm happy. But Connie also made a good point she said it's almost like they're looking in the mirror when zari speaks on annie's relationship and her insecurities and oh you know her she's not happy she's not happy she's not happy like lady are you <laughs> like are you happy when i hear her speaking on the marriage like she's not happy she's broken she's so are you Look how you spoke with Diamond. 
you're not happy you're broken you still want to know if he's thinking about you you still want to know if he if he considers big you know putting that family back together if he's going to be faithful and loyal like you still a part of a part of zari still wants diamond a part of diamond still wants zari but zari's like i don't give a fuck about my feelings if he cannot commit no but annie on the other hand right Annie, on the other hand, said he didn't commit, but I'm standing by it. She stayed in it. Zari left. And that's the biggest issue. Zari feels like, why are you in this when you're not happy? But Zari, you stayed in it when you wasn't happy. And then you made your exit. You feel me what I'm trying to say? So Zari looks at Annie like you were me when I stayed in it. And I hate that I stayed in it. And I hate that you're staying in it. Connie hit it on the head when she said they're looking in the mirror. Like you ever looked at somebody or seen what somebody was going through and it was like your younger self or or just you in a chapter that you just like maybe like your darkest chapter or a chapter you regret. And you went one way, but you see the person going that way. And it's like that could have been me had I gone that way. You're just so insecure. And you're, you're just not happy. But even if that's the truth as a woman you know to then add fuel to the fire it doesn't make you a better person like if she's not happy and she's pretending to be happy at the end of the day what she eat don't make you shit that's her relationship and her life and i'm not gonna lie to you i do think that in this chapter annie has found some happiness i do and it's it's unfortunate because you know everything that she's been through she's craving happiness she's craving like that fairy tale ending like she is madly in love with this man and it's so scary to me because i remember <laughs> i remember being madly in love with somebody and you know it wasn't reciprocated and it wasn't fair and it wasn't right and i was getting hurt and i was crying but i still stayed you know so it's like she's craving happiness with a person that she truly loves and she's decided like i'm not gonna leave i'm gonna stay but my happiness depends on him and two-faced even said like it's unfortunate like you're, you're only you only happiness can happiness can only come from you happiness can't come from another person yes yes another person can add to the happiness you already have within but that person should not be your sole source of happiness. Never. God is my source of happiness. You know what I'm trying to say? God healed me from a very dark and depressive um, stage in my life. God showed me love that I really never felt like I, a human can't show me. The love that God shows you, when you really tap into a relationship with God, that love is truly like no other. And when you when you in the presence of God and you feel his love, you then can love yourself more because it's like, if God could love me, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So it's like, if God loves me, I got no choice but to love me. He, like the creator says, I'm perfect. Hey, so who cares what you say? You can, you can pick out every flaw. But God says, I'm perfect. I'm a little bit off topic, but I just wanted to encourage some women out there that, you know, because sometimes we, we look for love and we look for romance in men or in things. God's love is perfect. When Annie said, people abuse the word love. I felt that. She said, people abuse the word love. Like, people just say, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Y'all don't understand what love is. I don't really think like the Me Too movement you know, hit Africa. Yeah, I'm not gonna hold you. Some things are still a bit cringy within the different cultures because the Me Too movement ain't really hit yet. You know what I'm saying? So there's still some things being said and done, and I'm just like, oh, oh, y'all gonna get canceled. Y'all gonna get canceled. You know, and those things will, those things I think will gradually change over time. Wigs. I'm gonna cool it now. I think. <laughs> I think that the wigs will evolve in, in Africa. See, when I'm like, wait, is that, did that wig start back here? They do good with natural. They do good with braids. But 
the wigs and weaves. But let me not say all Africans because there's a lady in Senegal that lays the fuck out of wigs. Like I wanted, when I went to Senegal, I really wanted to go get my hair done by her, but we didn't have enough time. If you are a billionaire, I need to also see that in the do. Some of the wigs, I was like, okay, this is a good wig. Or a decent wig. And I'm like, uh. Okay. I'm looking forward to the evolution of wigs in Young Famous and African. I, I, I see it. Like, they got the makeup on point. The makeup could be too much sometimes, but hey, it's TV. They got the makeup on point. I'm looking forward to the wigs on point. The looks was just looking. When Diamond pulled up in that silk pink, I said, y'all just, I just, I'm not gonna lie. This show motivated me to get more money. Like, I, I just seen all the foreigns. Hey, people that black, that African, they got accents and they got cars, they got the, they live the lavish life. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I feel like I deserve a lavish life. Like, I just feel like that's just in me. My name, Eloha, like, I'm, I'm just, I'm a queen. Like, I really legit wanna live like one, period. When Connie said in the first scene, <laughs> when Connie said in the first scene, we don't wake up to alarms. They're too violent. We wake up to a piano. And you see the guy playing the piano. I said, God, it's me again. Um, I don't want to wake up to violent alarms either. They're too violent. <laughs> I want a soft life. Like, I want a soft life. Like, my life is soft. Don't get me twisted. It's soft, but it can be softer. <laughs> Soft, but it could be soft though. You feel me? It's like you know when you 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 got a, you got a flat stomach, but now but you got abs. Like don't just stop at a flat stomach. You know, get some definition in them abs. And you know, I want abs. I want abs. I want my life to have abs. You know, and this show definitely motivated me. Like damn, like I want. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go up. <laughs> I'm ready to go up. Like I'm ready to go to the next tax bracket. I need to figure this out. When Annie pulled up with that blue ribbon number with the blue glove and her new ring, I was like, y'all is shitting right now. Y'all shit. So Nadia and her man. I wasn't too hard on Nadia, you know, flirting with Diamond when she got a whole boyfriend in America. I wasn't too mad at her because She's sitting with a group of people who do nothing but cheat. <laughs> like, she's sitting with a group of people who do nothing but cheat. And it's always on the women to remain faithful, to, oh, you have a boyfriend, don't you? But these men have wives and families, like, and they will go and get another family and another family and another family. I thought Andele was gonna try to get with Nadia, but Andele went for Zari. He is just smitten by Zari. He's like, I just wanna be alone with Zari. I just wanna be alone with Zari. And I was like, oh, y'all better really calm down for the Me Too police get y'all like, <sighs> Would you want to be alone with her for, sir? Like, but she definitely was taken to some of his advances and she definitely was like flirting back. And you know what I'm trying to say? I was like, is this real? Even if it's not, it's really good TV, but is this real? Especially at the end when he pulled up to her crib and Diamond was there. I said, nah, this is an African movie. This is a movie. This is not a series. This is a movie. He pulled up when Diamond was there. Diamond came back from Tanzania and he went to the house to see his kids and Zari. Andele has been seeing Zari. We don't know if they slept together. We don't know what's the tea. They kind of acting like, oh, we haven't kissed yet. We haven't done anything yet. I don't know. Cause it just, it could just be fake. But from what we know, they've been seeing each other. So he pulls up to the crib and he's like, who's that? And she's like, Diamond, you let him in your house with your baby father there? somebody would have died it would have been a, it would have been a shootout like i just oh my god i'm sorry i am too traumatized for this like i dated a whole hood nigga okay and so that that ain't gonna ever fly that ain't gonna ever fly oh, my, my nerves are so bad on that part but he welcomes him, you know, he sees, he sees Andele. And he's like, bro, what up, bro? You know, thank you for coming to see me. He thinks Andele came to see him because he came from Tanzania. So they chopping it up a little bit. How was the wedding? How was this? How was that? He then says, you know, I came to see Zari, you know? He's like, 
What do you mean you came to see Zari? Like, what do you mean you came to see my baby mom? It's like, what are you talking about? And he basically tells him, like, I like Zari. And he's like, bro, like, this is my family. This is my family. Like, what do you mean you like Zari? But this is the problem. Y'all want, y'all want the attachment. You want to be that barrier. But you break that barrier once you break the relationship. You cannot break the relationship and also control me, control my life, who I date, who I see. Yes, that is breaking bro code. That's between them. That is breaking bro code on a standpoint. That was wrong. Like, Andele, that was wrong. That really kind of made me see him in a different light because I'm like, you know that situation is very, very wet. <laughs> The situation is very sticky, like, it's very sticky. And you know that he still is madly in love with this woman. She's madly in love with him. They got to work out their kinks. Why would you throw yourself in the mix? That's why I'm like, I don't think this is real. I don't know. It could be. I hope it's not because I see Andela as more, like, level-headed. But, honey, when Yash comes into the picture, when Yash comes into the picture, ain't no level-head on this. Ain't no level-head. What else did I want to talk about? Girl, the train. <laughs> I was so confused on this part. How could you not have to rewind it? The train incident. Anybody else still confused? And that's why I'm like, are y'all just starting beef because it needs to be beef? So they get to the train. Zari puts together this safari. They take this train. They go to the safari. She puts together this whole event just like everyone else. Like I said, everyone at this point has put together an event, has said a speech, has thanked their guests for coming. Zari does the same thing. And Connie is just like, what does she mean, my event? What does she mean, my event? She means her event she set up the train ride she set up the safari she set this up and invited everyone aka her event i was very confused with the issue of her calling it my event andele when he had his all white party he said oh it's my party i could like my party when you had your ball your ball when diamond had his um arabian nights his event like I did not understand what was the issue with Zari calling it her event. I think at that point, we saw the power struggle between who is supposed to be the core and who could potentially be the core. Let's be honest. Connie is saying that we're all on the same level, but Connie definitely centers herself. Like she sees herself as the nucleus. Like, yeah, you might be all on the same level, but you feel like you're the power source. You know what I'm trying to say? So to see Zari say my event, I really did not see any issue with that. I saw more issue with Zari pulling Annie's husband to the side and saying your wife has been insecure versus thank you guys for coming to my event. And I'm glad that Zari spoke up for herself and was like, you're projecting. Like my confidence is up here. Instead of trying to come up here, you try to pull me down and you can't. Y'all are projecting. And I, will, I, I agree with that. I agree with that point. They, you know, Connie definitely was projecting. Annie already didn't like Zari. So she was just happy to have somebody who also didn't like Zari. Swanky loves Annie, but Swanky also wants peace and good vibes and a good time. He felt like the group was being segregated. So he got upset and spazzed out. Kaylee is just, <laughs> Kaylee trying to figure out her man. Kaylee is pretty, yeah, Kaylee is pretty neutral. Like I felt like Kaylee just got thrown on that side because of DJ Naked. And Zani says that her 15 year old daughter has her own apartment. She lives off to the side and she has her own apartment because she has different men coming in and out of the house. I'm like, are you a prostitute? I, I really tried to put the puzzles together. I said, I think Connie is a prostitute. Like, your daughter can't live with you because you got men coming in and out your house. And then when she was arguing with DJ Naked, DJ Naked was like, you always in a new Lambo. Because she tried to give DJ Naked advice on his relationship. And he was like, you are the last person to give me advice. You're literally always in a new Lambo. Every time I see you, you, you in a new Lambo, meaning every time I see you, you got a new nigga. So how could you give me any advice when you're always with the next man? 
your daughter can't live with you at 15 because you have different men coming in and out. And then Swanky defended her and was like, you know, you never know what could happen. You know, some men, if you don't trust these men, I'm sorry, if I don't trust you around my kids, I don't trust you, period. You're a nasty human and I can't trust you, period. And I don't need to be associated with you. But what she does with her vagina, I really don't care. It's more so for me, like you're mothering. Um, I saw that the daughter lived right next door, which I was like, okay, she's not like in her own, she's in her own apartment, but she's literally right next door. I just don't like the fact that it's because you are entertaining men. That's just me. I don't like it. I don't, I don't, that. And she says, you know, I'm not a kangaroo. You know, she says, you know, I'm not a kangaroo. I can't carry her everywhere. And I get that. But she says she's a liberal and hopefully that works out for them. You know, you never know. Sometimes things work out for different, different strokes, different folks. I hope that works out for them. I hope she's still, you know, showing her daughter love and parenting even from next door. Um, and Annie had a big problem with that. What? Nigerian? No. She had a big problem with that. Like, I, I, she spoke out immediately, was like, that's wrong. How could she be? She, she needs guidance. She needs help. So then Annie and Connie kind of went back and forth because Connie was like, well, your kids are in Nigeria and you're in South Africa. At least my daughter is right next door. Annie's like, that's not the same thing. They're with their parent, their father. And another parent, a grandparent. So you cannot compare me leaving for maybe a month to film this show to you full time having your 15 year old live in her own apartment. When your child is not under the same roof as you, it's a lot harder to raise them, to monitor them. Like you can't just let a child go freely. Like, oh, let's just let her be who she is. She can be who she is in my house. She can be who she is with my protection and my guidance. You know what I'm trying to say? With me there as a mother to nurture and love and protect and guide her. It's a different world. A Nigerian mother could never let you live by yourself. Are you dumb? Are you mad? Like, it's going to be some type of parent or guardian. And I didn't like the fact that she compared that to any situation. Every child has two parents. I might not physically be there, but they're with another parent and a grandparent. That is more, that's enough supervision, you know what I'm saying, for the children versus no supervision at all. You next door with your man doing what you want to do. But I do get that they are both African women who have careers and have lives and make money however they see fit and they need time away from their children. That's normal, natural mothering, you know, you got to go to work, you got to do, you got to live your life at some point, you know. Um... I, I was, I was, y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. Oh, it was a comment that, it was a comment that Annie made and she was like, oh, he likes dark skinned girls. Anyways, like I'm not, I'm not worried about you. He likes dark skinned girls or he likes slimmer girls. Annie, Annie, Annie. <laughs> and Zari said they cheat with the opposite types and it's true. <laughs> It's true. They do cheat with opposite types. It's true. There's a false confidence sometimes that women have thinking that a man has a type. Um, I know I know a friend that was like, you know, oh, he usually likes in the, he usually likes women that got her own money, you know, educated, smart, beautiful, bad bitch, fly. Why would he cheat on me with a girl that lived with his with her mom and she don't have nothing. She don't even have a real job and because men don't have a type. So when I hear women say, oh, you're not his type. You pretty, you got a pussy, you his type. You never gotta be pretty. Let's, let's really stop it. You never gotta be pretty, you got a pussy. <laughs> you ready to give it up? You his type. Respect for yourselves and your private areas. Like, but anyways, let me go. That was my take on Young, Famous, and African. I definitely want to do a review on Bel Air. Let me know if you want to see a review, if you've been watching Bel Air, and if you want to see a review on that. I definitely want to do that. But this is my review on Young, Famous, and African. Overall, I truly enjoy this series. I can't wait to see season two. I come to South Africa. I got to work on my pigeon. You know, just give me a couple, just give me a month. I got to get my bag up crazy. I'm going to be like, babe, like, I need a Bentley.
I need a Bentley, babe. You know, hopefully my babe could get me a Bentley. But y'all let me know what you thought of this review. Let me know what you thought of the show. Who were your favorite and least favorite characters? What moments stood out to you? Was there anything new, shocking, or surprising about Africa that you didn't know before? Who do you relate to the most? I feel like I didn't really talk a lot about Nadia, but I really liked Nadia's personality. I liked how she was just like also riding for her friends. Like, my friends keep talking bad about you. I don't even need to sit with you. I don't need to break bread with you. Like, I'm like, Nadia, you from New York or? Just let me know your thoughts. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video, share this review. Um, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye.